So today we're gonna have to drop off the class A to get the windshield fixed. <laughs> I've been waiting to get this thing fixed for like, I don't even know how long. We were in Albuquerque at the balloon fiesta. So it's been a month and a half, two months when I was going down the road and there was a bend, which doesn't sound right. It's not, there shouldn't be a bend there, but there was kind of a bend in the highway. It was either that or some road ruts on the side. Anyways, I didn't hit anything, do anything wrong, no rocks. There's no chips. It just cracked the windshield out of nowhere. So I'm gonna have to drive the class A to get the windshield fixed today. We're about ready to roll. Working on it. We're getting everything cleaned up, getting everything slid in. The good news is out the hoses and sewer and all that stuff, I can just unhook it and leave it sitting there. So that's gonna save us a little bit of time. I'm keeping an eye on the weather, but I may have to uh, winterize the Airstream soon because I definitely don't want anything freezing inside of it. It's been a pretty warm fall so far in Tennessee, but it can definitely change quickly. So we love the convenience of our Class A. I mean, it's that was a really tough decision deciding to give that up. But you also have the inconveniences of when things go wrong, you have to pretty much give up your house to get it fixed. So we've had that happen a few times. You know, they've kept our house a week before and we've had to find somewhere to go. Um, we've camped in a <laughs> repair facilities parking lot, which was really nice. They let us do that while we were getting fixed. And then now we have to take our windshield in. So it's just kind of the inconvenience of that. But there are some really great benefits of having a class A too. I'm sad about giving the class A up, but I'm not gonna miss this part. <laughs> Makes me a little sick every time I have to watch the Harvey getting worked on. <laughs> but I remember when we watched it get towed away. Oh man, that was such a sick feeling. It's like you're leaving somebody in your family or something there. It's different than a house somehow because you travel with it. It's got experiences and places and memories tied to it all over the country. And you hate to see it hurting. So we're driving past this U-Haul and I saw one of the vans. We thought about towing with the van. We thought about towing with the truck. But I love the van option because look at all this space and it's totally enclosed. And one of our issues was that it'd be really nice if Marissa could get out and see if Hensley needs help or if Marissa had to go to the bathroom. I mean, I'm not saying we'd have a fancy toilet, <laughs> but at least something in here would be pretty cool. Obviously this giant metal thing would be gone, but Marissa would have room to get out of her seat and go to the back and check on Hensley or do whatever we need to do. And these come with diesel engines and they can tow 10,000 pounds. We put a bench seat right here for Hensley. This, I would either move it back or I'd build something, a wall, farther back right here. And another thing I love about this over the truck is you can put a top over the truck or on low on the bed or whatever, but getting access to everything in the truck is such a pain because it's so far back. I know you can install drawers and things that can slide out and give you more access. But this, you open these two doors and look at all this, what you have access to right here. And you can easily stack all the way to the top. That's a lot of room. It really is. I would think we could get our stuff in there. The kicker would be the bikes. Um, I've looked into a folding bike. We've looked into mounting options for uh, outside of the, you know, the van or the back of the Airstream. There's, there's lots of different options for hauling the bikes around. But I would like to get bikes inside of this if possible. I'm actually going to talk to U-Haul, see if I can use it for a day or two and rent it. Cause I think I'd like to drive it around and just show Marissa and see, uh, see what she thinks. All right, we rented us a van for at least one day. <laughs> Looking at the long wheelbase vans and the short wheelbase vans, this one's 135 inches and then the long one's 155 inches. The problem with the 155, I like it because it would give us more room in the back for storage and I feel like it would be more stable for towing. Um, I'm still researching how big of a difference it's going to be as far as the wheelbase um, for stability. And I've honestly, I've kind of looked into the V10s and the Fords. Uh, I like that these Chevy ones have the diesel, can have the diesel engine, the 6.6 .6 Duramax, which is awesome. Fords diesel options of the 6.0 and the 6.4 diesel. I'm just, I don't think I'm into that. Uh, I know I could do the 7.3 that's older. Anyways, this is, I like the feel of this. And I like that the short wheelbase of 135 
you can turn sharper if you need to do a U-turn, if you're in a tight spot. Um, that's very handy because the Airstream is very responsive behind us when we drove it with the truck. So I'm just imagining if I have a vehicle that can easily maneuver with that Airstream back there, it'd be pretty nice. Another bonus for the Vans too is that, I don't know if it's because they're gutted out, or I know the diesel engines are toned down just a little bit from the truck too, but they're like 30% less than a truck, something like that. And we can get a, like a 2012 diesel van for what, like an 07, 08 diesel truck would cost us. So that's pretty nice, because I don't know that we need an insane amount of power necessarily. Um, and we can still get a three quarter, one ton uh, chassis just like we'd have on the truck with a van. The biggest downside is that Marissa likes the look of a truck better than the van. I've got to convince her to let functionality overcome aesthetics maybe with this one. Since we went with the way things look over functionality with the Airstream, maybe we can balance it out with a van. We'll take it, right? <laughs> the wall would be here, like just solid wall. And all that would be our garage back in the back. It wouldn't look like this. You can take and you can totally enclose this in and paint it whatever color you want, customize the floor, all that stuff too. You do not look convinced. <laughs> you gotta look past the ruggedness and look at the functionality of it. Oh my goodness, babe. I wish I could get your face better. <laughs> I just love having all this room in the back to store stuff. Like this would be our garage. Yeah. And and I love too that you could you can move around. You can go from the front seat to see with Hensley. You could sit with her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, you can get out right there. You can get out and go to the back. It's roomier than the Subaru. Well, yes. <laughs> give it that. She's kind of in shock. I don't think this is going well. She's just sitting there staring ahead. I'm talking about you. Hey, you know, it's nice to dream, I guess. What do you think about the van, Hensley? You like the van? Hensley likes it. She says she's good to go. Like it. You like it? Yeah. Like it. We're starting our painting today. It's gonna be a lot of white. <laughs> but we really wanna open it up. So we want a lot of white. Cabinets are gonna be white. Basically anywhere that there's wood, which is a lot, <laughs> is, going to be, is going to be white. The cabinets are really tedious because we've gotta take all the hardware off in order to paint the cabinets. But, ready to do this? Yeah, nervous. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get rolling. Well, we're making progress on it at least. We got everything out. And we've been painting, painting, painting. <laughs> lots and lots of white. She even wanted, uh, we're even gonna get the ceiling a little bit wider, so we're painting that too. And I didn't know that could be done, but apparently you can use acrylic paint, even on the ceiling, um, acrylic primer, and then whatever paint you want on top of that after you've used the acrylic primer on it. Prime the whole ceiling. Uh, we're about to start putting on the final coat on the ceiling. We've primed probably 75% of the wood. All this is wood, still chipping away at this. Gotta get the doors off the cabinets in here still. Kinda started chipping away back here, but still got all that to go. And we've taken down the curtains and all the fluff on the sides and the back. But just taking off the curtains was huge. It really opened the space up. And I mean, that's what we're going for. We wanna open it up as much as we can, make it as broad and airy as we can, make it feel as big as we can. It's going good. I mean, it's taken a while, but we, we knew it would. It's a lot of painting. Perseverance. <laughs> Perseverance. <laughs> if I could find somebody who would paint this per square foot and didn't know what they were getting into, <laughs> that would be the way to go. They wouldn't show up to seven days. They, yeah, it, I would get one day out of them at least. Or maybe till they went for lunch or something. But, <laughs> but me and Scott are gonna chip away at it. I'm liking it though. I'm liking the look of it. And we're still checking out. Marissa's starting to take a look at different floor colors. And so we're exploring that option too, what we're gonna do with the floor, as far as the color on the floor. The two biggest things you can do as far as bang for the buck and a transformation in an RV, this of course applies, applies to a house as well, um, paint and flooring. So we finished up painting for the day. Um, it's not done, it's getting there. <laughs> There's definitely a lot more white and a lot less of the natural wood color going on. I'm hoping soon we can start getting this thing ready um, and livable. The more we're changing the colors to light colors and the more we're opening it up, it feels better and better. So I, I really feel like we're making the right decision with this and I'm hoping the end result will justify the work that we're putting into it. <laughs> but gonna call it a night and uh, catch you guys later.